So I normally don't review DBS this early or this late at night, depending on how you look at it, but this is kind of a special occasion. I was watching the One Piece episode. I just felt, I felt kind of underwhelmed by it. It was weird. It's a very weird experience just watching One Piece episode. I was just like, oh man, like I felt something was off. I couldn't really put my finger on it. Like maybe the music or just the pacing or the fact that they were stretching out stuff from the manga. I don't know, it just felt kind of weird and I felt really underwhelmed to the point where like, I stopped the episode and I was just like, I just sat like eating a sandwich like this. And then I remember, oh, well, DBS, the Spanish subs for DBS, the raw version I think is already up, but I saw it with Spanish subs. And so I'm gonna be talking about it. So if you don't wanna be spoiled, you can come back tomorrow or whenever it is you watch the episode and then you know you can leave your comment, whatever. But I will be back to review One Piece next week, right? Next Saturday, because we know it's going down. If you read the manga, any, the fucking anime preview spoiled it too. But anyway, this episode of DBS, let me just get the shit out of the way, okay? So the first thing is like, at certain points, the art in this episode did look kind of clunky, looked kind of shitty. Uh, but in terms of development, okay, and, and characterization and world building, I think this episode, wow, oh, especially that ending, man, holy shit. It's Goku Super Saiyan Blue plus Kaioken times 10, the same thing we got in the previous episode. Turns out, hit was able to dodge that attack that we saw in the previous episode because he was able to expand the range of time leap. Just like Goku is upping his limits, so is Hit. Both of them are, they, neither of them stay stagnant. They're like boom, 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 matching each other. And so to the point where like Ciampa just tells, like Ciampa's like a total cheat throughout all of this. He just tells Hit, hey, you know, Kaioken is gonna run out soon and after that his body's gonna be fucked, so you might as well just dodge all of, his, all of his attacks and then wait for after he's just tired to attack him. And Hit is too proud. He's like, eh, no. Not, neither of these two fighters are going to take the bullshit. Hit manages to freeze Goku still. Like, there, there's a point in time, because of the increase in time leap, Goku still can't break out of it completely. You know, because, you know, Hit umped that up. And by the way, last week was fucking crazy. We had people going back to the comment section of the screw attack the, the Superman versus Goku fight saying, no, you have to do a rematch with Goku Super Saiyan Blue with Kaioken times 10 because now Goku can move faster than time. I'm like, hold your horses, you know, just hold your fucking horses. It's still really early in the game. Let's see what Goku can do. He can't break out of time leap just yet. We saw that in this episode. Hit is able to, you know, he lands some jabs. Hit was able to punch Goku out of Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken, all right? Does that thing, boom. And it, it looked like that was a KO. It looked like Goku was done for, but it's Goku. Those limits, boom. Back at it again. Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken reactivates and Goku lands a punch on hit as well. So they're so evenly matched. At least that's the first impression that I got. But then later on, well, first of all, we know that Kaioken's gonna run out. Super Saiyan Blue's gonna run out, right? It, it runs out and not only that, but unfortunately the Kaioken takes a huge toll on Goku's body. To the point where after after the fight, he goes to sit down next to Vegeta. He's like, man, I don't think I'll be able to use Kaioken in a while. In fact, Beerus gets pissed at him and he's like, what the hell are you doing? Like, you're costing me the match here, what the fuck? And then Goku says like, had I stayed, like the mode would have run out and I would have lost anyway. Whereas Hit, he doesn't look that drained. He doesn't look like it was, I mean, yeah, he had a couple of hits. You know, Goku landed a couple of really, really big blows on him, but it didn't seem like that exhausted him to the level that Goku got exhausted during the match. So that was really interesting. But, you know, the main thing here is that Ciampa and Beerus start going at it. Ciampa starts complaining like a mu- it's like, oh, like, could you please shut the fuck up? We're, to the point where he starts calling both Goku and Hit their pawns, like, you're just pawns in a match. Like, the, per the people that are important here are Beerus and me, you're just a bunch of pawns, and then Goku and, and Hit are like, no. We're not, we're not doing this. And then Goku asks Beerus, can you just eliminate all the rules of the tournament? Because in one of the previous episodes, Hit did make a comment, a very small comment. You know, if you didn't catch it, that's fine. It's in the episode. But he tells the, the referee, assassinating somebody is against the rules, right? So I can't use my assassination techniques. That right away gave Goku the, the thought process of like, okay, if this guy is holding back, I don't want to fight him like this. I really do not. I really want to fight this guy 100%. They cannot go all out because the rules of the tournament stop that from happening. So in response, Goku, in accordance with his ethics, with his, with his moral code as a fighter, he's like, well, if I can't fight Hit at 100%, 
and fuck this shit. And he just jumps out of the platform. Just whoop. That's it. Hit returns the favor by allowing himself to be knocked out of the platform by Monaka, who we all know is a troll, super weak guy, super weak dude. He was shaking, all right, on his way to the platform. It was really funny. You know, he just goes like this and then hits like, ah, oh, and then just, yeah. So that's Hit returning the favor, which is really cool because that means that we're going to have a Goku versus Hit rematch in the future. It just has to happen at this point. So, but, and then like Champa and Beerus start getting, like Champa specifically, he starts getting so pissed. It looks like he was going to kill like all of the fighters of, of his universe, of Universe 6, all right? And then all of a sudden, like Varus is like, Champa-sama, Champa-sama. After this, man, holy crap, the expansion the god lore of the Dragon Ball universe is expanding like crazy. This little dude shows up with two bodyguards and Champa and Beerus start shitting their pants. Holy crap. That me automatically, that means that this little guy, all right, is, is in terms of power, he's, he's above them. It has to be that way. Why else would they be shitting themselves? Um, so it's interesting. It's really cool because even though Monaka turned out to be a troll, you know, he said, you know, Beerus said that he was the strongest person that he ever fought, you know, above Goku, that turned out to be a complete lie. We have this character introduced, Zeno-sama, which I think means like king, king of everything, right? And both, both gods of destruction from Universe 6 and Universe 7 are like, holy fuck, holy shit, who do you think this guy is? Like, is he responsible for giving the gods their power? Like, what's going on here? It's so cool. The hierarchy keeps expanding. There's this Xenosama, Champa and Beerus, Hit and Goku. Oh, man, that, that's just great, man. I love the world building. Also, there was a brief joke of, like, you know, Goku just you know, shaking the, the penis of the octopus. It looked like a hand, but it's he actually revealed, oh, that's my, that's my penis. Unless those were some shitty subtitles and that wasn't the truth. I really enjoyed this episode. Please let me know your thoughts if you've seen it already down below in the comment section. Like the review if you did. I appreciate that. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Thank you.